Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. Welcome back to Diego Knows. I, of course, am Diego. And today I'm going to conclude uh, talking about The Notebook. The Notebook, that's right. That uh, piece of shit movie from 2004. That chick flick movie that so many of you love so well. Okay, now that I've finished watching it again, just, just, just to be honest with you, it wasn't all bad. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you the whole thing was a piece of shit. Because it wasn't. I've seen worse movies than this. I've seen worse uh, uh, chick flick movies than this. Okay, uh, where, where the movie succeeds, it succeeds pretty well. Unfortunately, the script is bad. The script is bullshit, all right? Uh, it doesn't make any sense, okay? There's so many plot holes. The situations, uh, particularly with Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, the young Allie and Noah, just make no fucking sense. Un completely unbelievable, unrealistic, uh, even for the 1940 standards, okay? It just it didn't sell me on that at all, okay? Where the movie succeeds, okay, is with the older couples, sp specifically James Garner and Gina Rollins, okay? They sold it, okay? Just watching that ending again, oh my God, they fucking sold it, okay? If I had made this movie, okay, now her son made the movie, okay? Uh, Nick Cassavetes, that's the son of Gina Rollins, uh, old Allie in the movie, okay? He made the movie, okay? But if I had made the movie, I would, all the stuff with Ryan Gosling and Richmond, I would've thrown that out. I don't care about them, okay? I don't care two shits about a fucking a weak man and a bitchy girl, okay? I don't give a shit about them, okay? Yeah, what they should've done is they should've recast it, uh, the younger versions of themselves should have been uh, should have been a better script, a better story about how they met, how they fell in love, all the all the problems that they had when they were young, why they got separated, all the, and make it believable. Don't give me none of this shit like I, I built a house for her because I couldn't stop thinking about it. Don't give me that crap. And, and don't don't make her a slut. Don't make her fucking cheat on her fiance. And don't make him a fucking incel who doesn't fuck anyone else except for one girl. In seven fucking get the fuck out of here. Come on, don't do that shit. Give us something more believable, more be realistic. Okay, about how more plausible as to how they fell in love. Okay, because that would make them make me like them when they were younger. Okay, uh, where the movie succeeds is in the end. Okay, in the end, in those scenes with uh, with James Garner and Gina Rollins. Okay, I can believe that they are a fucking a, a couple. They've been together for fifty years. I can believe it. Okay, the way they both perform in the movie is very believable. This is how an old couple. I, I have an aunt and uncle. Okay, uh, and he passed away when he was seventy seven. All right, he passed away, and my aunt passed away when she was uh, 83, okay? Uh, and they were married for like 50 fucking years, okay? They were married for a long time, you know? And um, how they are at the end, that, that's how it was, okay? That's how they are, you know? All, all that young passion is gone now, but they still have that love, and they still have the respect for each other. They still care about each other so much, you know? Um, so, so I could relate to that. I could see that because I've seen it before in my own family, okay? Uh, that stuff succeeded. Okay, I didn't like, you know, like, like I said in the last video, okay, when, when someone says some bullshit like, like, oh, the only thing important in my life is that I love my girl. You know, when a fucking young guy says that, it's pathetic. It, it's simp behavior. But when an old man says it, it's endearing. Oh, it's sweet. Oh, look at him. He's still in love with his wife. You know, you see what I mean? So the older scenes get a pass as far as stuff like cheesy ass dialogue like that goes, okay? The older scenes get a pass, okay? Um... But I really liked how they fucking related to each other as old people. As old people, that was better, okay? No, Noah's still a fucking pussy, okay? He's still a fucking simp. But I could believe that their relationship. I could believe that fucking, you know, there was something there. They've been together for a long time, okay? That's just who Noah is. He's a fucking pussy. There's nothing about him that I want to be like, okay? And most guys are not, don't want to be like Noah, okay? They don't want to be like fucking Noah, okay? They want to be themselves, okay? Not Noah, okay? Sorry, ladies. Noah's a bullshit character. Guys don't want to be like that, okay? Um... So, uh, so I could believe that part of it. That, that part of it seemed realistic, okay? But if they were to rewrite the end, or fuck, even better, just, just leave, make the movie a fucking half an hour, okay? Just have it be old James Gardner and, and, and Gina Rollins. And that's a movie that I think would succeed, was pretty fucking well, okay? Uh, you know, that would have worked, okay? Just have the old people in the movie and leave the rest of it out of it, okay? Uh, th that movie works much better that way. But unfortunately, you can't, you can't get, you know, a, a two-hour movie out of fucking a 30 minutes of really good uh, uh, story, you know, really good action. So fuck it, you know, whatever. Okay, anyway, um, that's how I would have done it. I would have kept James Garner and Gina Rollins. I would have recast uh, um, <laughs> a Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, and I would have fucking written a better story uh, for them when they were younger. A much better story than this shit, okay? Because I can believe that they're already together and in love and been together for a long time. I can believe that. I can't believe how they fucking fell in love. It was bullshit. Bullshit all the fucking way. Completely unrealistic. All right. Uh, so uh, where we left off last time is uh, Noah had a heart attack. 
Uh, when Allie uh, forgot who he was again, they had to sedate her and they actually locked her up uh, like in, into the mental wing of the fucking nursing home that they live in. Okay, and she was, they doped her up with Thorazine out the ass. I mean, you could tell she's just ooh, glassy eyed, dilated pupils. She's just staring, staring out the fucking, the little fucking gates they have on the window so you can't get out of the window, through the window. You know, just staring out there into nothingness, okay? Uh, he has his heart attack. He survives. Um, and they bring him back to the hospital. So once he comes back to the nursing home, sorry, the nursing home, uh, he tries to sneak out of his room to go visit his wife. Okay, well, the nurse catches him, okay, and tells him, hey, you can't be up here, whatever. But she uses plausible deniability. She says, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee, and I'll be back in half an hour. In that time, you had better not go into your wife's room, which is right over there, because that would be against the rules. You know, and then she walks away. So obviously Noah uh, takes that as his cue. He goes and he sneaks, he creeps into um, Allie's room. She's sedated. She's asleep in her bed, you know, in her hospital bed. And uh, he sneaks in there and he takes a moment. It's very dark in the room, okay? And he takes a moment just to stare at her, you know? And once again, James Garner just sold it, okay? He's a great fucking actor. I, I'd forgotten how good he was until I saw this again. I was like, damn it, you know? I Because I remember watching Maverick, the old episodes of Maverick from the 60s. My grandpa loved that show, you know? I used to watch it with him. And, uh, and I remember The Rockford Files. My uncle loved that show. I used to watch that with him, you know? So, uh, so I remember James Garner, okay? Um, and he's just sitting there looking, looking at, at his wife, looking at Allie, okay? And she wakes up, you know, and it's really sad. It's really sad. Like I said, this, this is the part where the movie succeeds. It succeeds here, and it succeeds at, at you, the audience, uh, evoking into you those emotions of first love, those emotions of falling in love for the first time. The first time you ever fell in love with somebody and they felt the same way about you, okay? This movie is very good at bringing that back to you, bringing that back to the forefront. So that the audience, you can relate to those feelings of love, okay, of young love, Okay, um, the movie's good at communicating that and getting you to evoke those feelings in your in yourself and into the viewer. Okay, how they fell in love is stupid as fuck. You know, it makes no fucking sense. But the fact that they were in love, it reminds you of what it's like to feel that way when you're young. Okay, and it's also showing you what it's like to still feel that way when you're old. Okay, so um, so he sneaks in there. Okay, and uh, he says hi, and of course the alley wakes up. You know, it's Noah. So that means that she remembers him. So he's excited now because she remembers, she called him by his name. So she remembers him right now at this very moment when they're talking, she remembers who he is. Okay. So he's like, oh, sweetheart, I'm so sorry. I haven't been here to read to you, you know, and because he, he had a heart attack, you know, he was in the hospital, you know, now it's like, you know, she says, you know, it's really, it's really sad here. You know, I mean, I'm getting emotional thinking about it, but she says, she says to him, you know, like, he was like, I was, uh, I didn't know what to do. I was afraid. You were never coming back. And he tells her, Allie, I'll always come back. Yeah, yeah, you will. You'll never, you'll never give her up. You'll never leave her, ever. Now, in a, in a chick flick like this, that's a good thing. Okay, but in real life, it's not. <clears throat> not at all. Okay? Allie's like, what's going to happen? What, what's going to happen when I can't remember you anymore? What are you going to do? He's like, I'll be here. I'll never leave you. And he's like, I need to ask you something. You know, they're whispering, you know. Do you think that our love can create miracles? Like, well, now this is right up fucking uh, Noah's alley. He loves talking about love and blazing hearts, you know, and all that kind of shit like that. He loves that shit. You know, he loves that more than anything else. He loves falling in love. That's what he's in love with, okay? So she's speaking his language now. You know? So she says, um, Do you think our love can create miracles? Yes. Yes, I do. That's what always brings you back to me every time. She says, she says, Noah, do you think our, our love can take us away together? He says, I think our love can do anything that we want it to. So you know where this is going, you know? It's saying it without saying it, you know? They've pretty much decided this is it. This is it. 
you know. Uh, I, I recently reviewed a movie called Thelma and Louise. I don't know if you saw that video or not, but uh, I got a little emotional when I saw it. I've never seen that movie before. When I reviewed it, it was the first time I'd ever seen that movie. Uh, but I ca really caught it at the end, you know, or maybe in the, near the end, that these women were on a suicide mission, okay? They weren't saying that out loud. It, it was left unsaid. They were saying other things like, hey, we're going to be sipping margaritas by the seaside, mamacita, you know, shit like that. You know, we're going to get up, we're going to stay in a fucking resort and we're going to do all this kind of shit. You know, it's bullshit, though. That's what's so heartbreaking. You know, it's bullshit. You know what they're really saying. What they're really saying is that we're going to fucking die out here. We're going to die. We're never going to get to where we want to go. We're just saying this shit to kind of numb the pain because we know what's coming. We know what's coming. We know we're going to die real soon. We're not going to get away from the cops. They're going to fucking get us. We're not going to go away easily, and they're going to fucking kill us. That's what's going to happen. But we can't say that out loud because if we say that out loud, we might, you know, you know, get scared and actually fucking pull the car over and surrender to the cops, you know. So they can't do that. So in order to keep their their um, their confidence going, in order to keep their, you know, to keep that, you know, out of their minds, you know, to keep the thought of fucking surrendering out of their minds, just keep saying bullshit until you die, you know kind of lessen, lessen the anxiety. And that's what's happening here. You know, they, they're basically making their pact, you know. Okay, and uh, they kiss each other briefly, you know, he kisses her, and then he, get, he, uh, he gets in the bed with her, okay. Uh, he's, and she, Allie says, I love you, and Noah's like, I love you, Allie, you know. And he crawls into the bed with her, he gets underneath the blanket with her, and with his, with his uh, left hand, he holds her right hand. And they hold it above the blanket, you know. And they both just lay down there on their back, you know. And Allie tells him, good night. And Noah tells her, good night. The last thing he says to her is, I'll be seeing you. He loves that song, man. He loves, he loves jazz. Noah loves jazz. He's always listening to jazz when he's, when he's woodworking in his shed, when he's making furniture or whatever, when he's, when he's cutting wood, he's listening to jazz. Okay, the first time he danced with her uh, in Seabrook, North Carolina, in the middle of the town, Real late at night when there was no one around, no traffic, you know, and they were walking and talking. He slow danced with her, and he was humming that song, I'll Be Seeing You, the Billie Holiday version, okay? Uh, he was singing, humming that song with her, I'll Be Seeing You, and we heard it. In the soundtrack, it's in there, okay? So the audience, we hear the song, uh, Billie Holiday's version of I'll Be Seeing You, which is a great song, you know? It's about going to sleep, and when I wake up, I'll, see, I'll be seeing you again, you know? That kind of thing, in my dreams, that kind of shit. Okay, later on, uh, before, right before he had his heart attack, he had a private dinner with her. Now she's old and she doesn't remember him anymore. Uh, but for a minute there, she remembers him after he read her the notebook, the book, you know. Um, and they, and he, uh, he had it on tape. He had the same song on tape. This time it was the Jimmy Durante version of I'll Be Seeing You. And they slow danced to that, okay, right before she had her latest manic attack. Okay, so, and right before his heart attack. So him saying I'll be seeing you, Okay, that's his song. That's their song. Okay, maybe not her song, but that's definitely his song as it relates to her. You know, when he hears that song, it reminds him of Allie. It makes him think of Allie. Okay, it makes him think about that night uh, in, the 19, in 1940 when they were dancing together, slow dancing together in the middle of the fucking street, you know, humming that song. Okay, and she was talking about how she loved to paint, you know, and, uh, and he was talking about like, you know, about her. You know, about what was, what was so special about her, you know? So it brought back to that moment when they were slow dancing together, you know? Um, back when she was 17, he was like 23, you know? Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's why he said, I'll be seeing you. You know, I definitely caught that reference there. And it's a good song. I listened to it recently. The both versions are pretty good, you know? And I like Jimmy Durante. He was, he was mostly a stand-up comedian, but he did do some singing too, you know? Uh, and it was a good song. It was a really good song, you know? So, uh, so I caught it. I got what they were trying to go for here, okay? This is the end. Okay, uh, we're, we're, you know, let, let's go off together. You know, earlier in the movie, you know, before she had her attack, she asked Noah, let's just get in a car and get out of here. Let's just go away from here, you know? And uh, what she, well, and in one sense, she meant let's just get out of the nursing home and go for a ride. In another sense, she said, let's get out of our lives. Let's get out of this world. Let's go somewhere where it's better, you know? And hey, you know what? At their age, I'm not going to argue with them. They've had long lives. Now, me personally, I mean, I, I, this is where it pisses me off when, when, when I look at them when they fell in love when they were young because it's such a bullshit story. It's stupid as fuck. This guy was wasting his life. He had no idea she was going to come back into his life. And the fact that he could have easily driven over to her house and seen her at any fucking time. He knows where she lives. He's been writing to her for a fucking year. She could have done the same. She could have called him. She could have fucking driven. Knows, she knows where he lives too. 
and she knows where the fucking, the house that he built, she knows where that is because she's been there before too, before he built it, before he bought it. So she could have found him as well and they didn't for seven years. And for seven years, he was acting like she was still there. Like she was still his girlfriend. He built the house for her. He built that room for her with the, with the, with the canvas, you know, and the easel. You know, he built all that shit for her. You know, not for himself. He built it for her, for a phantom girlfriend. That's not healthy. See, that's the stupid part of the movie. You know, unfortunately, that, that's what the movie's about. It's about them when they were young, and that's fucking stupid as fuck. I like the old stuff. I like it when they're old. These are two fucking solid actors that fucking know what they're fucking doing. They know how to um, evoke emotions, you know? And they're selling it. They're selling it. They're the best part of the movie. James Garner and Gina Rollins. Guy, my hat's off to them. Both. They're fucking incredible. You know, I think they both passed away. I think maybe Gina Rollins might still be alive, but she's like in her 90s, at least, you know? Uh, but James, I know James Garner passed away already. But, um, you know, so it was great. It was great watching that. Watching that was great because I, I related to them. I didn't care about how they met. I just wanted to see them right now. I already knew they had 40, 50 years together. Okay, I already know. I, I can believe it. Just watching them interact, I can believe it. Okay, but but I didn't need to see their fucking past. Or if, if you're gonna show me their past, show me a better one than what you fucking gave us. That was stupid as fuck. That made no fucking sense. I mean, you could fly fly a fucking 747 through all the fucking plot holes in that. All right. So um, so yeah. So they there. He says, "I'll be seeing you," and they they fall asleep together. Which which you know they didn't do that. They they died. They passed away at night in the middle of the night. You know, and it's sad. It's sad, but you know, at the same time, it's like I get it. You know, this is this is what they wanted. You know, I'm over here criticizing their choices. I'm criticizing Noah for his choices, and I'm criticizing uh, Allie for her choices. But you know, they were, that was their choices. They just weren't the choices that I would have made. But they're the choices that they made, and if they're happy with it, so fucking be it, man. You know, not everyone has to agree with me. You know, maybe for him, that well was enough. You know, from someone like me, it's not enough. It's not enough for me just to, to love somebody. I got I to gotta know that they love me back, okay? I can't just love somebody who doesn't feel the same way about me, you know? Who's, who's, who's not gonna, I'm, I can't just commit myself to somebody if I don't know they're going to they're gonna do it for me too, you know? I can't do that. I can't, I can't be happy just loving something that something's got to love me back. For Noah, he's just happy loving somebody, even if that person's not there, even if they don't remember him. You know, even if they don't see her every day, you know, even if she's already screwing somebody else, married to somebody, else, he doesn't care. The fact that he loved somebody is enough for him. And God damn it, it is. Okay, he does everything for a girl that's not even fucking there. You know, it's, it's, it's sad. Okay, yes, of course, they end up together because it's a fucking movie. Okay, but realistically, that wouldn't happen. Not really. I mean, even me, I've been in that situation before, okay? I, I, I could help but think about my ex when I was watching this movie, about the stupid shit that we did and all the fun that we had when we were young, back in our early 20s, and then we see each other again, you know, in our 30s and shit, and so much time has passed by. We're older, but we're still the same, and, and it all comes back. Like, you know, I'm, an old, I'm middle-aged now, you know, but all those feelings of being 20 years old again, it all comes back like, like that, like it never left. You know, I know what that's like. I've been there myself. Okay, but you have to put these things in a certain place in your life. Okay, that's where they belong. You can't let that shit hold you back from moving forward with your life. Okay, that's something Noah didn't do. And because this is a movie, that's a good thing. It's good because Allie did, did magically appear back on his fucking front porch. She did magically appear there. She didn't magically fall in love with him again. She didn't magically fucking put her life on hold for him too. Oh, this is the shit. This is like the fantasies of a fucking deluded fucking psychopath. You know, a stalker. That's, the, that's, a, that's what this is. This is their fantasies come true. This is not real life. You know, so yeah, so that part of it I didn't like. Like I said, you could have done, done without the whole Rick, or Ryan Gosling and Richard McAdams. I could have done without that. Uh, give me more James Garner and Gina Rollins because they fucking nailed it. They sold this movie to me. They did. And unfortunately, it wasn't enough for me to give this movie a pass. All right. They weren't in it enough. They should have been in it more. You know? So the next morning, uh, the nurse comes in the room. And she sees them there in bed, you know. She thinks they're asleep at first, but then she, she touches their hand, because they're holding hands. Allie and Noah are holding hands. They died holding hands together, you know. And she touched their hand, and she realized, like, <gasps> she realized that they passed away holding hands. You know, it, it's sad, you know. It's, it's pretty sad. But, you know, this is the life that they wanted. This is not the life I wanted, I would want for myself, but this is the life that they wanted. You know, this is what they did. These are the choices that they made, you know. So, and this is, because this is what made them happy. Hey, my hat's off to you. Fine. That's what makes you happy, you know. But uh, uh, I, 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 w I would want a little bit more. 
You know, uh, I would want, you know, to know that my partner is, is there for me as well. That when I can't be strong, she can be strong. You know, when she can't, I am. You know, that kind of thing. You know, that, that's real equality. That's real equality of a relationship, you know. And, um, yeah, I just don't think that, I don't think it sold me. I believe that they were in love. I don't, I don't believe how they fell in love. That's stupid. Okay. So, of course, the next morning, nurse comes in. Uh, she finds them there, and they're dead. Holding hands, okay. And the next scene that we see are the, are the ducks. The ducks are flying away. They're flying away back to where they came from. And that's how the movie ends. That's the end of the movie right there. Um, the reference with the ducks goes back to uh, when, they, um, when he took uh, Allie on a canoe ride after she came back into his life, after she found out that he, re he built that house he told her he was going to do, and she went to go see him. Okay, well, the next morning he took her on a canoe ride, and there was ducks there, and she loves the ducks. She mentioned earlier she, she thinks she was a duck in a past life, and she asked him if he was a duck. He's like, if you're a duck, I'm a duck. You know, that kind of bullshit. Anyway, uh, so... Um, She's feeding the ducks while they're on the canoe ride. And uh, she, she tells them why there's so many ducks here. And he's like, oh, well, they're only here for a little while. They have to go back where they came from. You know, that kind of thing. You know, because he knows that she's married. Well, she's married. She's engaged. You know, she's going to get married. You know, uh, so yeah. So that's a reference to that scene. The ducks got to go back where they came from. The ducks go back where they, they fly away. Okay, which means that Noah and Allie go back where they came from, uh, which was, I guess, heaven. You know, if you believe in that stuff. Okay, they go back to heaven. Okay, that, that's it's a metaphor for that. So that, that part of it was well done. Like I said, the movie was well directed by Nick Cassavetti. He directed, he gave his mom some of the best scenes. I mean, Gina Rollins really nailed it, you know. Um, uh, but overall, yeah, I, what, I, what I can't stand is the story. The story uh, of how they first met and how they fell in love. That's all bullshit, you know. Um, first of all, how old, they don't explain to us how old Noah was when he met her. I'm guessing he was 23 because that's how old he was when he filmed the fucking movie. No, he was 24 when he filmed the movie. Okay. So, um, yeah, you know, I know, I know she was 25 when they filmed the movie, but she was playing a 17 year old. Okay. Um, I don't like Noah's character as a young man at all. He, he seems to have wasted his life. You know, his best friend died out there in the fucking in Bastion in World War II and he didn't really, didn't really give a shit. There's one scene where he's like, and then that was it, you know. I mean, this is your best fucking friend, you know. Uh, he has no other friends. He lives. He lives like a fucking hermit. He just drinks a little. He doesn't have a job. If he does, what is his fucking job? I don't know. He never tells us what his job is. We don't know what he does for a living. All I know is that once he built the house, he just started drinking himself to death, and contemplating burning the house down and shooting at people that offered him a lot of money for his house. You know, I mean, he just says, "No, there's no way to live." Not a guy that built his own house with his bare. I mean, your fucking father died helping you build that house. And you want to, and the first thing you think about after you finish, you want to burn it down? Out of your fucking mind? God. You know, I mean, so yeah, so he's very unlike, to me, he's unlikable. Okay, the fact that he put up with uh, Allie's abuse, she smacked him across the face several times, you know, she shoved him, you know, she called him names, you know, she did all this kind of shit, you know, he just took it and didn't really say anything about it. You know, I mean, every once in a while he would say like, hey, you're being a pain in the ass! You know, but... You know, he just, like, let her do that. Like, that was okay for him. It was okay for him to, to fucking mistreat him like that. That's, that's not a good message. That's not what you want to say. You know, I mean, personally, if a woman hits me, you know, fuck, I walk away. You, you have cut off communication with me. Communication's done. I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm getting the fuck out. Okay? You get one, and that's it. You know? So, but he didn't do that. He just fucking let her. And then he fucking, he fucking hits himself, too. Like, what the fuck? I mean, you don't, you don't give a shit about yourself, you know? The fact that he, he, uh, he threatened to kill himself in order to get her. He was hanging from a, a carousel. Not carousel, uh, from a, um, uh, what, what do you call Ferris wheel. He's hanging from a Ferris wheel in order to fuck with one arm in order to get her to fucking, to, you know, he's, he's going to let go and fall down unless she says yes to a date. Who the fuck does? No, that's not endearing. That's not charming. Okay? It's not. That's fucking crazy. That's crazy. You know, but, but I guess it works. It gets him a date with a girl. And then, come on, it's just a stupid shit like that, you know? Uh, yeah. And he's just so fucking one itis The first time he sees her in the bumper cars, he's just like... You know, and he never fucking looks at another woman again. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. You're telling me in the seven years since they broke up, he never fell in love with another girl? He never met another girl? Well, he met Martha, but she was a widow, and he wouldn't fucking give her the, uh, the, the commitment that she wanted. You know, she was pestering him. Hey, what do you want? You're thinking about another woman every time you look at me. You're thinking about another woman. You know, and he's just like, uh, 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 
Mm-hmm. You know, like that. He said, well, come on, man. You got to move on, dude. You gotta, you're gotta. you doing this to yourself. You know, try it in real life, guys. Try that. Okay, when your girlfriend breaks up with you, try fucking just fucking doing nothing for seven years and being an asshole. Okay, because she left you seven years ago. Try living your life like that. See how many girls you get. Okay, you're not going to get any. Okay, you're not going to get any. All right, crying about that over and over again. All right, you're not going to get into another relationship. Okay, because you won't let it. Okay, that's a fucking waste of your life. That's a waste of your fucking life. That's not the message I would want any guy to get from fucking watching this movie. Okay, but that's the message you get. Okay, uh, what message does Allie get? Uh, that guys fight over her? Okay, that guys fight over her? Like she has to make a choice between two guys? Okay, realistically, there would be no choice. Okay, Lon would have fucking dumped her ass the moment he found out that she lied to him about going to fucking Seabrook, North Carolina. He would have fucking called off the wedding. He would have said, that's it, fuck it, fuck this bitch, and you're paying me back for the fucking ring? You're paying me back for the fucking venue that we already booked, okay? And you're, you're, you and your family are going to fucking send the governor a fucking letter of apology, okay? You know, because he was supposed to be at our wedding, okay? So, yeah, that, that's what would have happened realistically. But no, of course not. Of course not. He's just like, I understand. And I forgive you. Get the fuck out. That's not a fucking man. That's not a real man. This is the woman you were going to marry. This is the woman you're going to spend the rest of your fucking life with. This is the one that's going to be the mother of your fucking kids. And that's how you react? Get the fuck out of here. You know, and then, uh, and then for even Noah's girlfriend, Martha, you know, she thought it was cool. She called the woman that was fucking her boyfriend. She called her, oh, she's sensational. Oh, my God. She was the biggest cheerleader for fucking Allie. She was happy. She was happy that Allie was screwing fucking Noah. She was happy. What kind of girlfriend is happy about that? You know? Now, I know there's some girls that don't give a shit. That's because they don't give a shit about their boyfriends. But Martha clearly loved Noah. She wanted a relationship with Noah. She wanted it. She was pestering him about it. He was always blowing her off. She wanted to get serious with him. You know? And then she comes to see him and she finds another girl fucking him. And she thinks it's cool. Let's all just have fucking dinner together. And then when you fucking get out, I'm going to fuck him some more, okay? Okay, it was nice meeting you, nice meeting you too. You're sensational. Oh my God, no, I'm so happy for you. Looking at you, knowing that you're boning her, it makes me feel like I got something to look forward to. Now you take care of yourself and go fuck her. Okay, bye. Yeah, that's, that's not how girls react. I've been in that situation before. That's, that's not how it went down. That might have been how I wish it had gone down, but that ain't how it fucking went down. Oh, fuck no. Fuck no. No, it went down with there was like scratches and fucking holding people back. And yeah. Yeah, it, went, it wasn't easy. It wasn't, it wasn't clean like this. We sure as fuck did all three of us sit down together and talk about how great she was. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, Ripley don't fucking believe that shit. And you shouldn't believe it either, ladies. Don't think that's going to happen. If you don't believe me, go cheat on your boyfriend and see what... Uh, lady, uh, ladies, have your boyfriend cheat on you? And then tell me if, if you reacted the same way Martha did. When you came home, when you came to his house to see him and there was a, his ex-girlfriend was there. Okay? And yeah, they had been doing it already. Okay, yeah. Tell me how, how that would make you feel. Would you react like Martha? Would you be like, oh, I'm so happy for you, Noah. She's sensational. No, that's not how it fucking goes down in real life. That's bullshit. Like I said, the young parts of the movie, when they're young, when, when Noah and Allie are young, are the worst parts of the fucking movie. The worst. And I mean, it's bad. Real bad. Didn't sell me in shit. Okay. But other than that, uh, I thought the movie was well directed. Um, like I said, I, I loved, I loved the, the romance when they were old. That was good because James Garner and Gina Rollins are incredible actors. So they did a great job with that. Uh, but the young stuff, I couldn't fucking stand. Okay, so this movie overall, this movie does not get a pass because there just wasn't enough of James Garner and Gina Rollins in there. And the love story of how they met was just a bullshit story. I didn't believe it for one fucking second. I got mad. The fact that I got mad at these characters because they weren't acting. The, the men in particular were not acting the way real men would act. And Martha, come on, ladies. I'm not a lady, okay? But come on, ladies. Would you have reacted the way Martha did? Fuck no, you would not have. You would not have, okay? If that had been you, now if you're Allie, you're like, oh yes, Allie, good, you go girl. You won over his girlfriend, she's okay with it. Okay, that's if you're on, on team Allie, okay? But I like to root for the underdog, 
okay? I would rather fucking feel more empathy. You know, you know who, who the characters, how good the characters are, but how they treat the side characters, okay? Martha and Martha and, and Lon got shit on. There's no way around. They got shit on. So how the fuck are you supposed to make me feel compassion and empathy for these two fucking assholes that shit on their partners? How? You can't. I don't care shit how much they love each other, okay? They shit on other people to be together. Okay? That, that's, not, that, that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. And for those of you that have done it, let me tell you something. You might be able to get away with it when, you, when you're young and pretty. Okay? But when you get older, it's going to be a lot harder. So don't shit on guys that actually give a shit about you, that care about you. Okay? Don't. But, you know, what can I say? You're not going to listen to me. Oh, well. <laughs> that was the notebook. That was the notebook. I've completed reviewing the notebook, all right? Okay there, uh, now I'm going to take a little break for a few days and then I'm gonna review another movie. I think the next movie I'm going to review, it's gonna be a chick flick movie, but it's gonna be a chick flick movie for guys. Yes, I'm fin gonna finally dive into the male domain of relationships. Let's get out of the fuck, let's get out of the vaginas, okay? And let's start fucking uh, going through the, the dicks here, okay? The guys, what is it like for us? Not just me here telling you what it's like, but it's, that's going to be in the movie. The movie, the movie, you're going to see what it's like to be a guy, okay? So yeah, okay, so it's chick flip for guys, okay? That's going to be my next movie. Uh, I'll leave it a surprise what it's going to be, but I'll announce, I'll, I'll put it here, I'll post something here, and then I'll start reviewing that movie, okay? So I'm looking forward to it, because some of these movies are really, really good, okay? So the next movie is going to be a chick flick for a guy, okay? Chick flick for dudes. All right, I'll see you soon on the next one. Thank you for watching this long. Bye.